Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. New this afternoon, an FDA panel has voted to recommend both Moderna and Pfizer's COVID vaccines for children under the age of five. Infants and toddlers are currently the only group in the U.S. that remains ineligible to get vaccinated. So this moves that shot now one step closer to being able to get in the arms of children. Natalie Brand reports tonight from outside the FDA headquarters in Maryland. Infants and young children are a step closer to getting vaccinated against COVID-19 after an FDA panel voted to authorize shots from both Moderna and Pfizer. It's a population that has been much less affected uh, than the older populations, particularly the oldest population, but one nonetheless uh, has also been affected. The CDC says more than 440 children ages four and under have died from COVID during the pandemic and hospitalizations among that age group have risen during the Omicron surge. We have to be careful that we don't become numb to the number of pediatric deaths because of the overwhelming number of older deaths here. Pfizer says its three shot series is 80% effective in preventing symptomatic infections in young children. A third dose is necessary to provide high protection against Omicron. Two doses of Moderna appeared strong enough to prevent severe infections, but only 40 to 50% effective at preventing mild infections. The drug maker has added a booster to its study. You can call it a primary series can call it uh, a booster dose. I think all of us agree that these children are going to need a third dose. Moderna's vaccine for this age group is a quarter of its adult dosage. Pfizer's is just one tenth. The FDA says both were well tolerated and side effects minor. The CDC still has to weigh in. If the vaccines get the final approval, they would likely become available early next week. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Silver Spring, Maryland. Now, it's unclear how much demand there is for this youngest age group to become vaccinated. Right now, only 29% of kids under the age of 12 have been vaccinated since they became eligible. For Pfizer's shot in November, one local pediatrician talked with us today about the importance of getting the COVID vaccine approved for kids. I think a lot of these kids still are um, at high risk because they are the younger population and typically with most of our illnesses it's either the elderly or the very young who don't off fight off these infections well and so um, still the under five are at risk of increased hospitalization and death from COVID. So here are the next steps. On Saturday, the CDC panel will meet to decide on a formal recommendation for the vaccine and they could be available again as early as Monday. New details tonight about the 31 men who were arrested last weekend from the back of a U-Haul in North Idaho. Court documents show one man bailed out multiple suspects from jail. Police say the group has ties to white nationalism and was planning a potentially violent riot near Coeur d'Alene Pride celebrations. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley is joining us now in the studio with more. $2,200, Whitney, that's what one man paid to bail out seven of the 31 suspects arrested last weekend for conspiracy to riot. Now, Kootenai County Court documents include a receipt showing Joshua Plotner made the payment. Now, according to that receipt, Plotner paid $315 plus some fees for each of these seven suspects. They all come from Alabama, Utah, Missouri, and Texas. Now, Mitchell Wagner from Missouri is one of the men Plotner bailed out. Wagner was previously charged with defacing a mural of famous black Americans on a college campus in St. Louis last year. Now, the receipt also lists a phone number for Plotner, but our calls to him have only gone to voicemail. Meantime, it is unclear what connection he has to the men that he bailed out. Now, as for the remaining suspects, court records confirm 12 paid their own bail Four secured surety bonds, while four others had their bail paid by people who appear to be their relatives. Now, a majority of these 31 suspects have their have scheduled their court appearances between mid July and late August. We are continuing to track this as the remaining few get their court dates scheduled. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. And this Pride Month, there have been several anti-LGBTQ incidents in the state of Idaho. Most recently, of course, that group accused of planning a riot at the North Idaho Pride Alliance event this past weekend. And as Amanda said, all 31 suspects are now out of jail awaiting their next court appearance. 
In Boise, pride flags on Harrison Boulevard were also vandalized or stolen. Boise police say says that over 30 flags just went missing. They were put up less than a week ago for the Boise Pride Festival. There have also been, of course, countless other incidents across the country, and it has many people asking why there is a greater focus on the LGBTQ community right now. Court, uh, Kootenai County court documents show the white nationalist group went to Idaho to raise a voice against LGBTQ plus morals. The Southern Poverty Law Center says it's something we could see more of in the coming months. Experts say hate group violence is becoming more visible as extremists continue to take their values to the streets. Just the escalation in the rhetoric has become much more violent. And then again, as I said at the beginning, against the backdrop where there is a greater acceptance of violence and people, um, you know, both, both parties see the other as the enemy. Um, and there's this acceptance that those that have been defined of, as the enemy are fair game for violence. Um, so it's just a really, a really toxic, scary mix that unfortunately I don't see going away anytime soon. She also says we could see increased violence around rallies and polling the closer we get to the midterm elections. Back in 2000, the Southern Poverty Law Center hate map documented one LG, anti-LGBTQ hate group. Today, it's more than 60, and they're all focused in, in 27 different states. This doesn't include general hate groups. She says that political leaders should call out the hate they see and hold people accountable for their actions. All right, let's switch gears and talk weather now. Things definitely clearing up today. A lot of rain, though, over the last few days, so it was nice to see the sunshine today. And Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo, I'm, I'm going to say you agree with us, right? Wasn't it nice? It was absolutely lovely. I actually got a little <laughs> bit of yard work done, so nice. it feels good. It's one of those. It's more but than I did. Oh, well, I, oh, did you get outside? Uh, yes, I did. All right, that's all that counts. All right, there you go. That is the most important thing. Right now, we sit in the mid-60s, not all that bad considering where we've been the past few days. We do still have some flood concerns. A couple of areas of note. Let's start with down to the south. Notice the Palouse River no longer under a flood warning. Still looking at minor flooding off to the north near Newport. That's just downriver of Albany Falls. St. Mary's, that's going to be the St. Joe River near St. Joe, starting to crest and go down as well. So we are seeing improvement. However, I am so sorry. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but here we go. We have a flood watch in place. That's heavy rain on burn scars, and that is for the potential to see some heavy localized rain early tomorrow morning, and that's going to move in. So right now, not much going on on the radar, but watch what happens as we put it in motion. Those showers move out, and here's the big push of moisture. It comes early tomorrow morning, and that's where we have the potential to see those heavy localized downpours, and that could cause some flood concerns elsewhere around the region. Not really even going to notice that the showers are going on. In fact, here in Spokane, we should stay dry. Temps fall into the low 50s tonight. And by tomorrow, it's a mix of clouds and sun. And once again, climbing into the 70s. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. We are tracking a situation developing in Chelan County tonight. Right now, the Chelan County Courthouse has been evacuated because of a bomb threat. So here's what we know at this hour. Earlier, all of those county offices were closed and evacuated. Within the last hour, though, the threat has been narrowed down to just the courthouse. There are no lockdowns or shelter in place orders. We are waiting, though, uh, to get an additional update from the Chelan County Emergency Management Department. As soon as we have that information, we will make sure to pass it along to you. Police are searching for a man they say sexually assaulted a woman in North Spokane. Investigators say early Wednesday or early yesterday morning, an armed man assaulted a woman near Wellesley and North Alberta. Police have not yet identified the man, but they say he is a person of interest in this case. So take a look at the picture. See if you recognize anything. If you have any information on the assault or this suspect, make sure to please call Crime Check. That number is at the bottom of your screen. All right, still to come tonight, a state of emergency in Montana. We are tracking historic, devastating flooding, sweeping away homes and bridges right along the Yellowstone River. First, though, the West Coast seeing low tides, some of the lowest they've seen in almost a decade.